You're on the left, isn't it, Bill? Yeah. In the March of Dimes, we were poster children in 1955 for Montgomery, and we had our picture on the brochures. Uh, there were telephones back then. TV had just come in. It was a big thing. And it was like, if we just had enough money, we could solve the problem. And at that time, it was believe America still believed if you, if we had the resources, we were the greatest nation on earth. We just won the war, and we can win this if you give. Once again, Hollywood pitched in. We don't know how lucky we are and how much we have to be thankful for with our health and our happiness. Judy, and that's why we should do all that we can to help all of those who can't help themselves. I know. Can I put a dime in your envelope? Oh, yeah. you know that you can. And that's what every good American should do. Join the March of Dimes. I'm old, I'm old. We'll lick the polio with dimes and quarters and our dollars home. I'm old. We'll come to you. And soon the polio effort paid off too. A vaccine was developed in 1955 by Dr. Jonas Salk. Your faith in medical science and the unending fight against disease have helped bring about the newest miracle, the Salk anti-polio vaccine, which theoretically could lead to 100% protection. After the first successful tests, it was planned to inoculate every child in America. My father called our doctor, and we went and got the vaccine. And then it was over. That was the fix. There was no more polio. There was no more worry. But for the Gerald twins and thousands like them, the fix had come too late. It was a real bittersweet experience for me because I felt like uh, I was the last soldier in the last war that got shot at the 11th hour. You know, me and my brother and I, it's, it's, it's like uh, being toted back to the ambulance and hearing, hey, they just declared victory and the war is over. The president expresses the heartfelt thanks of 164 million Americans. A true benefactor of mankind, Dr. Salk tells the nation, I gladly accept this recognition of what each of us has contributed, and I hope that we may have the opportunity to see again in our lifetime the beginning of the end of other fears that plague mankind. Western governments had the money and the know-how to see that everyone benefited from the new drugs. But in the underdeveloped nations where most of the world's population lived, conditions were as they had been for centuries. In India, uncontrolled infections and diseases still took a huge toll. Teju Raghavir lived in a village in Uttar Pradesh. At that time, there wasn't a hospital or a doctor or even a herbalist near the village. We used to go running to fetch a herbalist, but by the time we got back, the patient would be dead. Smallpox, measles, cholera, plague, influenza. These were fatal diseases. Smallpox was the most feared. The virus made the body break out in pustules and laid sufferers low with fever. It often caused blindness. A severe bout struck Bikarma. I had such a massive attack of smallpox that my eyes closed up for eight days. They just would not open. It was only God's will that they eventually reopened. When the pox finally receded, water oozed out of the pustule so profusely that I could wipe it down my limbs. 
The outer layer of my skin began to peel off. A vaccine to prevent smallpox had been available for decades. But the disease was still killing two and a half million people a year in countries where vaccination programs were not well established. But in 1963, India moved to educate and vaccinate its people. जब किसी गांव में ऐसा मेला लगता है, तब वहां के और आसपास के लोगों के जोश का ठिकाना ही नहीं रहता। लेकिन किसी को इस बात का कोई ख्याल नहीं होता कि ऐसी भीड़भाड़ में संक्रामक महामारियां चुपचाप अपना शिकार खोजती हैं। जनस्वास्थ्य विभाग के पथक गांव-गांव में जाकर लोगों को जानकारी कराते हैं। India's education campaign worked so well that the vaccination clinics couldn't keep up with demand. Smallpox continued to break out all over the country, and India sought outside assistance. This is the World Health Organization broadcasting from Geneva. The World Health Organization had been established by the United Nations to combat disease on a global scale. Twelve yellow fever cases confirmed Trinidad. Influenza. 340 cases reported Paris. Three cases reported... A primary goal of the organization was to eradicate smallpox from the face of the earth. International teams helped governments in South America, Asia, and Africa. By 1972, smallpox was gone for much of the world. And the World Health Organization focused on the plight of India. Instead of waiting for people to come to central clinics, teams of doctors were sent out to search for signs of smallpox in Indian villages. One of the most fruitful places to begin was in the bustling open-air markets. The market was a uh, very important place to get the information because there were people coming. So there were several outbreaks in the time uh, when they were uh, found because of searches uh, in these uh, markets. The doctors knew they couldn't vaccinate hundreds of millions of people, so they took a revolutionary approach. They would concentrate on controlling individual outbreaks. They used pictures to try to find cases. Then they would isolate them and vaccinate everyone within a two-mile radius. But traditional attitudes toward smallpox sometimes held up the work. For smallpox was seen as an accepted part of life. Pilgrims came from all over India to Benares and worshipped at the temple of Sitla Devi, the smallpox goddess. Victims were said to be blessed by her and holy. <laughs> In remote areas, villagers still worship the goddess. They felt the proper response to smallpox was prayer, not medicine. Even when cases were identified, people living close to victims refused to be vaccinated and put the campaign at risk. I started to vaccinate a woman. She was so angry, she spat in my face. I didn't say a single word. But the other people in the village got very upset by her behavior. Later on, everybody in the village was vaccinated. In the villages where cases were reported, people were examined and samples of their scabs taken. If smallpox was confirmed, reaction was swift. There was panic in the village. People were rushing to and fro. Then the doctors arrived to give injections. Vaccinations started. People were forcibly vaccinated to pacify the goddess. I remember what a hot and sunny day it was when they came and took us for vaccination.
The long process of tracking down cases and then vaccinating around them went on for months. Sleeping in a village, just eating in a village, just uh, working uh, 18 to 20 hours a day because there was no way to do anything else, simply only work. We were moving into the first outbreak, living there till the time uh, it was contained and uh, then going to the another outbreak, uh, managing the, the work and moving simply from one outbreak to another one. Gradually, the number of outbreaks declined until smallpox was confined to only a few villages. By 1974, the search had narrowed down to the final cases. One of the last was in Bihar. The smallpox victim's house was quarantined. For two weeks, vaccination worker Zafar Hussein stood guard to make sure this final infection wasn't passed on to anyone else. And that's why I stayed on that very veranda for 15 days until the last scab was shed. It was on her right leg. It was shed in front of me. Then I knew that the infection would not spread. In June 1977, the World Health Organization team posed with the Indian minister. India was certified free of smallpox. The disease was thought to have gone from the world. But the celebration...